Hey, welcome back to Dirty Shirt Workshop. I've gotten a lot of questions about how to operate the Longwood Furnace. So this is going to be a little video instruction manual, but I also have the actual book. I went ahead and I took pictures of every page, cropped them, cleaned them up nice. They're going to be available for download. I got a public link down in the description of this video. No charge, anything like that. I just thought people would like to have the complete book. I'm not going to cover everything in here. Okay, so I'm just going to cover basically day-to-day -day operation of this furnace and how I use it. Let me put this book down. So the first thing that I do, let me pick you up and show you here, is I move the reclaimer uh, cleaning rod. So here's the heat reclaimer, and it's got this rod on it. I just push it in, pull it out. It only takes one finger, it's real easy. You don't have to do that every time, but I do. It takes all of no time to do, so why not? Then you're not gonna get your reclaimer plugged up because it'll pull a lot of creosote if you don't. So here's inside. This is after a night of use. Let me get some more light in here. So you can see what's going on. I got a little few coals like right here in the front. There's some ash all the way in the back there. So what you're supposed to do is actually rake everything to the front because the front here, there's holes in this grate. See if you can see the holes, there you go. And that's where uh, all the ash falls through down here into the ash drawer. So the first thing you do is you rake everything to the front and clean it out. So I'm gonna go do that right now. If you don't have a cleaner rod, just get some half inch cast iron pipe at the home store, five footer, and weld yourself a little hook on the front. A garden hoe would probably work pretty good too. Although I would round the corners, sharp corners, not so good. Now once you get your ashes up here, just rake them back and forth over those holes. And all the small ash will fall through into the bottom. So now you can see it's clean all the way to the back. All my coals are in the front here and it's just coals. There's no, there's no, uh, there, even better without the light. There's no ash or anything on there. Now you gotta fill it. So you're supposed to use four to five foot long pieces of wood. A uh, guy that had this before my dad Apparently, he burned railroad ties in here for 20 years. The book says don't do that, by the way, but apparently it does just fine. Uh, they kind of tell you not to use stove wood, but that's what most everyone has. And I agree with my dad. I tried it. Putting long sticks in, like if you're cutting tree branches, four foot long, and trying to stuff them in here, it sucks. It doesn't work because they're not straight. So you can get a few in there and they're all jammed up and you can't really get a good load of wood in here. So I just use regular stove wood, it works fine. The first layer, I just toss them in here, I try to get past the coals and set it closer to the back. All right, so here's what it looks like right now. Okay, so now I'm gonna get my rake and push everything to the back. Okay, so now you can see that wood all the way in the back there. Now I'm gonna put a second layer of wood here. And that's really all the higher I fill it. That's maybe 60% full. You're not supposed to fill the cavity up all the way. If you do, it won't flow right. And apparently it'll get too hot. 
So, and that's where the smoke discharge is, is all the way in the back. So I got the second course of wood in there, or second stack. Now I'll just put my third stack in here. And instead of using the giant pieces like that, I'll usually use a little bit smaller, reasonable pieces now because this burns from the front towards the back. And once your coals are low like this or you're just lighting it, you wanna be able to get a good fire in the front. All right, so there's my next course of wood. You can see the coals there right at the bottom. I might even shove those in a little with the rake. Let's do that. All right, so there's a couple ways to get this going. You can kick your thermostat on and the blower fan will run. Or what I like to do is just open, close the top door and open the ash drawer. Then the air drafts from the ash box up through the coals and gets the fire going real, real good. You don't want to leave this open all the time, but it's a good way to get it started and running good. While we're waiting on that, I've been asked about switching between gas or oil and wood because this, this is a dual fuel furnace. This burner here, this is the, the propane burner. So you just put propane on here. And when there's a call for heat, it'll actually shoot fire with uh, propane gas into the firebox. That would be real nice because if you have that hooked up, after you load it, just close the door. And once it calls for heat, it'll light your wood for you. And you don't have to mess with it. Since I am doing wood only here, that's why I'm leaving this door open, okay? You don't have to do anything to switch between gas and wood. You wanna use wood, put wood in there. When the wood runs out, it'll use the gas. I have never ran this with gas, I never hooked it up. All I care about is using the firewood right now, but I can see the convenience of letting the burner light it. Now the other thing that I will do when it's really cold out, and it's having trouble keeping up with just natural convection flow with the doors shut, is I'll kick the, thermos, the thermostat so that it runs the blower in here. I'm gonna do that for you right now. Okay, so now that blower is sucking air in here uh, it's blowing it in through this burner tube where it would normally be shooting fire, the, the lit gas, because you'd have a pilot light here and, and gas going in. But this will also supplement the airflow. And it basically, if it's below 20 degrees out, I'm going to run this. Don't go by that temperature. This is a 6,000 square foot building. It'll be different for you and your house, your plenum setup, and everything like that. Okay. Uh, you just got to mess with it, play around with it a little bit. You figure it out after about a week or two of running it, what's going to work for you. Then when the weather changes, you figure out the new thing. Basically, if the outside temperature, if the highs are 10 degrees lower, you're going to have to operate it just a little bit differently. Okay, let me shut this noise off. Other thing I do every spring, once I'm done running it, so sometime usually about mid-May, I open up my stack, I run a chimney brush up and down, and I clean it out the chimney, okay? You should clean your chimney every single year. I got a video about that out here too. Keep your ashes cleaned out. You, uh, they say in the book, don't leave an ash bed in here because the coals actually radiating heat into the ash bed. And since the blower blows through there, you don't want a lot of ash left in here. You always want to clean it every single time. Uh, one other thing, if you're setting this up for yourself, 
and you're not an HVAC guy, you're just putting it in, one thing you'll want to do is uh, the blower motor on this is only supposed to pull five amps. Great tip from my dad, he was a motor man for 20 some years. Uh, put an amp meter on the power lead that goes to your blower and then cover up the intake of your blower until it's not drawing any more than five amps. I just got this piece of old flooring on here and you can see this is tied down pretty good. The squirrel cage fans will move a lot of air and it will actually overload the blower and you'll burn out your blower motor. So when you first fire this thing up, uh, we just used, you know, when we did it, we just used through two by sixes up here. Found out two of them was working good. So uh, I change the filters every month out here because it's real filthy. The book tells you twice, twice a season. Uh, they're 16 by 20, one inch filters is all you need. Sounds like it's uh, getting going here. Let's uh, open this up. Yeah, it's starting to go. So this is the one thing why they tell you not to use stove wood. You can't really tell here, but it's starting to burn the second layer of wood back there. Essentially, the, the, the premise of this furnace is that it burns the wood like a Yule log. So it burns from front to back. And they claim with the short wood, it's not going to do that. I don't know how it would not light the surface of the wood all the way back anyway if you had a log in here. So I don't know if it really matters. I do know right after I load it, the blower might run for a couple hours uh, without shutting off because it can just really whop the heat in here. Uh, that works just fine for my setup, so that's what I do. Well, that's lit off and ready to go. It will heat for another 12 hours. That's one of the beauties of this furnace. You only load it twice a day. It runs 12 hours on a charge. I use less wood in this than I do in my little wood stove in the house that I heat the house with. And the shop is 6,000 square feet. The house is only 1,500. So if you've been running this furnace for a full cycle and you know the wood's burned down you can open your top door right away but if you got wood in there which this is after the rest of this video you don't want to just open this door up you get a ton of smoke out so you don't want to do that the right way to do it open the ash drawer just a little bit be patient give it five or ten seconds and it'll clear smoke out of the ash drawer and out of here don't whip this wide open right away or you will get smoke out but now, I can go ahead and open this top door, and it won't be real bad. I'm getting a little bit here because there's a lot. One thing I like to do is keep my books and manuals with the machine that they go with, so they're right there. So one thing I found really convenient for that is a one-gallon zip bag. They usually 8 and a half, 11 will fit in there real good. A little bit of strong tape. And now I always know where that book's at. In this particular case, since I'm putting this on the plenum here, because I don't want sun getting on it, don't use duct tape. Most duct tape actually says right on it, it's not for heat. And it will just dry up and fall off in a month or two. It doesn't last very long. This is some uh, primate base tape. We'll go with that. All right, but that book will just hang out there and it's always there if I want it. Although I'll probably just always look at the digital one that I made for you guys now. Okay, another thing I did for this, this is another one of my dad's ideas. I made this uh, steel frame here. It's uh, bolted down to the floor. The furnace is bolted to it there. And then you got this cross bracing here. This raises the whole furnace uh, foot off the ground. It just makes it a lot easier to load because that door is pretty low otherwise. Uh, Dad did this in his basement. He just made a brick platform. I think his was 18 inches. I didn't go that high because I knew that I was gonna be doing this other improvement here, uh, which is my smoker attachment. I got another video about that. 
But uh, the basic premise is smoke comes up here through this box, up through this box. You can cook your food in here. I got racks and a pizza sheet to catch drippings. And then there's just a damper here to control the flow and make the smoke go over into the box. I didn't put the smoker directly above the furnace output because that would put the reclaimer up too high to actually move the cleaning rod. I didn't put the smoker above the reclaimer for two reasons. It would make the smoker too high and any salt or seasonings plus the fat dripping on the tubes for this reclaimer would rot them out pretty fast and just ruin it. So I didn't want to do that. So definitely if you're going to do something like this, make it a side-by-side -side setup. It's been working real good. I've used this about a year now. I'm real happy with it. The other thing that I do is I have the discharge on the furnace blow all one direction so it circulates around the entire shop makes a circle keeps the heat even and it's blowing here on my wood to make sure that all my wood is dry these are my firewood racks that i built i can carry these with a backhoe they hold about a cord and a half they're four by eight by six feet high you can uh i can fill them so much the backhoe can't lift them and it lifts 7,000 pounds so i go through i think i'm going to land it going through six of these this year to heat all of this, which really ain't too bad. That's maybe eight, nine quart of wood, and that's the shop and the house together. I think it does pretty good. I really like it. It's a good unit. If you got one, don't throw it away. Use it. That's all I got for today. Thanks for watching.